What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on this finally Friday, end of the week, start of the weekend. Woohoo! Let's party it up a little bit. And maybe not. Latest activity on this beautiful Friday, which, by the way, is December 16th, 2022, about 9.37 a.m. here along California coast. We got a uh, 2.7 over here around the Indonesia area. That is the latest earthquake activity coming into the map. Also, some activity kicking up there on the Hot Caves Hawaii station. i just seen that coming in um, down here. Hasn't been listed yet. But up here, around, uh, well, outside of another volcano, Haleakala, the island of Ma uh, Maui. Seen some activity just within the last hour. Not specifically at this volcano, uh, but by the way, the last eruption here at uh, Haleakala was about 500 years ago not seeing any unusual activity there listed this earthquake uh, occurring within this channel it's a 4.0 at about 13 kilometers deep uh, definitely some movement kicking up down here in this area uh, some unusual activity as well i'm looking at the historical data here for the maui area shows um definitely show some activity here of course Got to remember this island chain here. The more active regions are going to be here on the southeastern front as the Pacific Plate um, slides across this hot spot, creating new islands. Eventually, uh, we'll have further islands out here uh, to the southeast. Not anytime soon in our lifetimes. But uh, as you can see here across the map, there has been that trail of islands left um, over that hot spot there as the Pacific Plate has moved into the northwest region. Um, so these volcanoes back here will obviously get less and less active. But um, yeah, definitely no activity right at uh, Haleakala, but some movement within that channel. We'll watch that pretty closely. Um, and I'm going to check here real quick and see what we got for that uh, that odd reading there on the seismograph that I've been looking at here since the uh, eruption of Mauna Loa and Kilauea stopped back around the 9th or 10th of this month. Uh, I've been seeing a whole bunch of little bitty earthquakes similar to like a uh, something you would see in the earthquake swarm at uh, any other place here on Earth. Let's go over here and check it out. Still continuing there. Uh, there is the... Fo <laughs> don't know why it does that. I don't know if it's me or if it's... Uh, this web page that tends to uh, uh, black out like that. So there's the 4.0 coming in uh, around Mono, or, um, Maui just a little bit ago. Local seismic activity here to this seismograph station um, right there at the summit of Mauna Loa is still showing this unusual activity. Uh, just a lot of little baby earthquakes there. And it's been like that here since since about the 10th of this month, since about the time that this eruption here at Mauna Loa and Kilauea stopped at the same time. Um, so I something's uh, stressing here. These are definitely some type of stress quakes um, there in the area of the summit region of Mauna Loa. So we're watching that. Um, also the tilt meter um, within this area is still continuing to rise this is inflation rates here they have been ongoing uh, with this blue line here on the graph since the eruption stopped so not only are we getting like this major earthquake swarm below i mean it's not a huge earthquake swarm and the usgs is not even acknowledging it but i see it there on the seismograph stations there it's a lot of little bitty quakes and it seems to be centered here over this region right here around the northeastern section of the uh, uh, crater area up top of Mauna Loa. So I'm, you know, I'm uh, not 100% certain. I keep saying that because there is a lot of uncertainty as to what's going on here. Mauna Loa does have some explosive eruption history. Now, I talked with the USGS um, geologist here a while back in email, and they mentioned that the last one, uh, wasn't back in 1843 some reports are stating that but he states that it was like about a thousand years ago 
um, when it last had an explosive eruption, uh, more so than just a fissure opening up in the ground spewing out lava. So I'm talking about explosive up at the summit, shooting out material and rock and large boulders. So I'm not for sure if that's what's going on here at Mauna Loa currently, but along with this weird earthquake activity, this a lot of little spikes here. That's a lot. I know how to read these graphs. They're not ice. I don't think they're ice quakes. Uh, I don't believe it's wind because we were watching the Windy app and we seen some wind one night and that's kind of what I assumed. I thought it was like some type of uh, wind events showing up there on the seismograph station. But the wind died down, things calmed down, and we started to see this activity continue. So I'm uncertain as to what it is. Most of the time, if you're looking at a stable seismograph, it's going to look something like these lines here that are stable, not having all these other spikes and these questionable um, signatures across them. It just looks to me like an earthquake swarm, something under stress uh, in this area. So both volcanoes stopping, uh, stopped erupting around the 9th or 10th time frame. Inflation rates began at Mauna Loa and getting this earthquake swarm currently. So that tells me something is brewing in this area. Now a look here. Let me go to uh, Kilauea Volcano. A couple of these tilt meters were not working last time I checked. Um, we're not really seeing that same reading over here at Kilauea Volcano. Yes, there is some earthquake activity, but uh, it looks a little spotty here in this in this location. A lot of times what we're seeing is, at least within this reading area, is uh, the Pahala area that's picking up a lot of earthquakes activity, smaller ones. Uh, you can kind of see them a little bit more well-defined here on this station. But uh, I, like I say, that's just a really weird reading there at uh, Mauna Loa uh, for the past few days. And I want to see if I can bring up a tilt meter here around Kilauea Volcano. And I... I remember checking these out here. They're very spotty, broken up, um, not reliable. So I'm not for sure what's going on with this network station here. But none of them are really working out here across the uh, uh, Kilauea volcano area. It's not really the one I'm concerned about, but I'd still like to see. Okay, here's the, let's see, 1214. Past two days of activity. I'd like to see the past a week or so, but it, there definitely was an inflation uh, elevated mark here. Looks like, uh, so this is from the 14th to the 16th current time. Looks like about a day or so ago, the 15th, it started to inflate once again. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the latest updates here from these folks uh, at Mauna Loa. First, this was put out yesterday, so nothing has changed, and they stated that uh, unless something changes or there's some unusual activity, they're only going to be doing this once a week. So nothing has changed today. And their update yesterday was that everything's good, good to go, calm, no tremor. Uh, but they're still, clue well, I can't say clueless because I'm in the question mark category as well as to what's going on down below. Uh, the significance of the continuing inflation while the flow field is inactive is not yet clear. Um, so they're still a little bit um, maybe scratching their head wondering what's going on. But they don't mention anything about all those little bitty earthquakes showing up there at the summit. That's on Mauna Loa. And Kilauea Volcano. Let's check here real quick and see what we got. Just getting this out of the way because that four-pointer uh, coming in there around Maui just a short time ago. Might want to keep an eye on things down below. That's that's a key to studying volcanoes is what is going on below the surface and within the areas. We can obviously see what's going on at the surface levels. <clears throat> we can see if it's erupting or not. And also GPS measurements and gas emissions. Uh, this update was put out Wednesday uh, for Kilauea Volcano and um, has not resumed. This is still the same stuff. Um, no resumption of the seismic tremor, uh, strong degassing or supply of lava from the west vent that would be associated with reactivation of the eruption. So there's been none of that. Uh, potential remains for a resumption 
of the eruption or initiation of a new eruption at or near the summit of Kilauea. So, <clears throat> yeah, we won't hear anything back from these guys probably for a week because they are uh, only doing weekly updates now, but we'll see. See how this plays out. I think it's um, Hawaii's beautiful area, but also very dangerous in terms of, um, you know, volcanic activity. It sits right over there um, on a hot spot. And you can see it go back here, you know. But I think if anything major took place, we would definitely see the scars of it or the, uh, the, um, the resemblance of something catastrophic happening in the, in the past but it's hard to uh it's kind of hard to decipher what's going on here but we'll keep an eye on it for sure all right uh what else do we have going on here a lot of earthquake activity throughout the globe uh, a lot of it over here around the western pacific areas around oh we got tonga moving fiji the return of some super deep earthquakes here in fiji six wow 654 kilometers deep that's about as deep as they come in this area. Sometimes we get a little bit deeper ones, but uh, it's been a little while since we've seen a 650 kilometer deep quake. Not a big one, but uh, definitely moving some stuff up there, or down there, I should say, with some subsequent shallow or earthquake activity upstream happening. Deep movement here. If there's enough strain built up in the subduction zones, we'll definitely see it, see that uh, movement. And that's kind of what we've seen there. Literally um, 18 minutes later, deep, subduction zone quakes upstream a couple hundred kilometers around the um, you know the stressed area this is all stressed but further upstream uh, 18 minutes later we get this 4.6 so we'll watch these zones the subduction zone area I know we've seen a lot of sixes and some sevens over here um, in the last has it been a week has it been over a week it's been over a week so a lot of deeper movement being adjusted here um, within this area and even though we've seen some sixes and sevens here oh well, I'd say within the past couple weeks then you know we still gotta we still gotta keep an eye on certain things here uh, I don't think we're gonna see any more sevens but this area is still showing quite a bit of uh, stress and deeper movement in the region an area that really hasn't caught up yet is the area around Kermadec Trench southward into New Zealand it's still been our little quiet zone our watch area can't uh I guess you can kind of bend and stress the plates here a little bit. But either way, eventually um, the Kermadec Trench and New Zealand area will catch up with some further movement. Not a whole lot showing up down there today. Uh, and the GeoNet servers, let me see what we have for GeoNet real quick. <clears throat> uh, 2.6 yesterday, North Island, New Zealand. Uh, the all magnitudes map here, deleted earthquake here about an hour ago. Um... Yeah, a couple twos, a couple ones. Looks like it's uh, most of them around the North Island, New Zealand area. So not a whole lot going on around New Zealand currently. Um, the volcano activity, not seeing anything unusual. No major movement, no major swarms around any of the uh, uh, volcanic areas listed here on the map. All right, uh, back further west here. As mentioned, we got some uh, movement here around Indonesia. We did see that earthquake showing up here on the map. Some some movement around the Philippines as well, just outside of Manila with the 5.0. China, uh, Myanmar area, some of this activity from last night. In the Papua New Guinea area, uh, looks like one 4.5 here along the Java Trench. The Papua New Guinea area, all this activity here lo looks like it was prior to midnight. So a mixed bag of newer and older quakes across the region uh, with with a lot of deeper renewed activity around Fiji <clears throat> so stressed areas watch the uh, subduction zones the area up north here around the Kuril Kamchaka Trench still hasn't shown any activity um, eventually it will <laughs> can't help but wonder uh, how big a quake it will be once it does show some uh, significant movement the Aleutian Trench area Got one earthquake here down into the subduction zone. That one coming in yesterday, 4.2. Down there pretty deep at about 157 kilometers. Uh, Alaska, further up north here, 
Had that earthquake outside of Anchorage yesterday. As far as newer movement goes, it looks like a little bit uh, now near uh, Valdez. 1.4, 2.8, uh, just northwest of Anchorage. And a little bit of spotty activity here around the Trident Volcano region. Mount Martin area, Martin or Martin area. A um, little bit of activity, it looks like. That was confined mostly to yesterday. The West Coast region here, not a whole lot going on through the Pacific Northwest. Still watching the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Had this earthquake come in, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> 2.1 in Hayfork, underneath Hayfork there, uh, earlier this morning. 26 kilometers deep into the subduction zone. Now this earthquake out here, 2.8. Now it looks as though they've made a little adjustment to the location of this earthquake. I remember last night uh, doing the update here. Uh, this was centered a little bit further to the southwest, if I remember right. It had that uh, roughly about the same depth, but over here. But uh, this would make more sense. 18 kilometers deep for that 2.8. And this is right smack dab on the Cascadia Megathrust area, the southern segment, right as it goes, uh, right as it subducts here, the locked area. Um, so we did see some prior movement after, or uh, we've seen some prior movement here uh, yesterday prior to this quake, and then following it uh, this morning. So got to watch this area pretty closely. It looks like this thing may be pointing towards something building up out here. Uh, I'm not saying it's a mega quake out here. I don't think we're going to see the 9.0. Possibly, you never know. Um, 322 years. But this area does uh, historically get some other uh, sixes and sevens in the magnitude area. The last earthquake. Oh, when was that? I think we had a uh, an upper six out here in this region last year or the year before. So not uncommon to see those, but got to watch the subduction zone areas. We don't see a whole lot of earthquakes right smack dab on this area here specifically. All right, uh, further south, Clear Lake Volcanic Field rocking and rolling today with a bunch of earthquakes. Quite a few ones out there around the Cobb Mountain region. Calpine hydrothermal operations ongoing strong today. Uh, further down south, a little bit of activity here around Lake Tahoe. Now, uh, Cornelian Bay, 1.0.4. That one coming in yesterday. I don't believe I've seen those earthquakes listed up there last night. So sometimes the USGS does put earthquakes after the fact, after they can study study them. And, um, it, you know, we see them the next day. But this area did see a pretty good intense earthquake swarm back in... Um, 2019 I think it's been a little spotty since then either way activity can happen here in this area of Lake Tahoe there's a couple different significant faults that run through the area uh, further down south along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault Let's see what we got for newer activity uh, most of this here that you're seeing on the map these earthquakes here along the plate boundary from yesterday 2.1 about the latest quake here inland, nor about the northern end here of the uh, Diablo Range off the Sa uh, San Andreas Fault, off of the uh, this little fault system here. Uh, further down south, gets a little spotty, uh, not quite as active today. Uh, a little bit of movement, 2.3, 2.2, a couple other smaller quakes there on the San Jacinto, San Jacinto Fault Zone. Nothing going on across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault for now. Uh, over here in Texas, uh, looks well. Looks like most of this from yesterday as well. We did have one 2.7 just after midnight. I think of anything right now. That uh, as far as the uh, teeter totter effect that I chat about here, it's just kind of neutral zone. Uh, with something with a little bit here and a little bit on the eastern side no major uh, directional change of that movement right now uh, some movement around the puerto rico area british virgin islands up around the puerto rico trench with 3.4 coming in 30 kilometers deep major area subduction zone region <clears throat> south america not a whole lot popping up here 15.0 in peru 
Um, looks like right at the Peru Chile trench level, 10 kilometers deep. Now, quick glance here at the EMSC model. Not a whole lot of swarming here across the region. Uh, things kind of mellow there today. <clears throat> a little bit of activity across the, uh, looks like off the coast of Costa Rica along the plate boundary there. Yeah, things are a little spotty, but still, uh, man, some deep, deep movement there in Fiji. Looks like we got another 2.1 coming into the big island of Hawaii. Uh, that's going to be the station right here. Hot Caves is that station around the Pahala area. Picking up some of that earthquake activity and something else right there. Um, most of these other stations look pretty quiet for now. There's that uh, 2.1 in the Pahala Swarm. We'll watch this area potentially for some deeper movement. Also, uh, we'll keep an eye on that swarm that's kind of kicking up there on Mauna Loa. Now, Yellowstone National Park. Just want to cover this real quick, see if we're missing anything. Doesn't look like we're uh, missing a whole lot there at Yellowstone. The uh, graphs here look pretty quiet. Uh, maybe a little, a couple small specks here. But uh, overall, things very minimal. Uh, to say the least there across Yellowstone. Space weather event. Uh, I know this owner of this site here has been having some issues with his site being hacked and uh, all sorts of stuff. But it uh, looks like the data is still there. And we're still popping with numerous M flares. And this has been an ongoing event now for about three days. I'll have a total tally of these M flares tonight. Uh, which I'm sure is probably over 20 or more M flares. That's just M flares. We've been crackling with C flares consistently during this time. We haven't even dropped below the C, C uh, level threshold uh, in the past three days, it looks like. So no X flare yet. The closest one that came was, uh, I believe it was this upper M flare here uh, that kind of peaked up around the M 6.3 level. Did have another close one over here, but not quite uh, as elevated as this one. Either way, activity is still elevated. And um, the majority of this activity continuing to come from 3165 right here. It's still kind of flaring. You can kind of see the latest image here, uh, the brightness on the this regional sunspot. Uh, when we see a large M flare or an X flare, you'll see a very well distinct, uh, kind of like an X or something uh, similar to that indicating a, a very strong flare. Uh, just It's just so bright. It's creating that uh, type of effect on the lens of this uh, monitoring station. So this one right here, 3165, kind of turning away from us. It's almost completely out of view, uh, but it will continue pro to provide flares and it will be picked up across the um, flare graph, the X-ray flux chart, and it will still be um, felt here on Earth far as the radio blackouts go um, across certain levels of the sunlit sun, sunlit portion of the Earth. Goodness. <laughs> but any CME that does blast off from there will be definitely directed away from Earth. Now, there is a sunspot here we're kind of keeping an eye on that's Earth directed. That is 31. 63 now that is in position here that's uh this is a little bit older image so we'll check out the most recent one uh, it's still got potential here to harbor maybe at least an m flare um and it is directly facing earth but not for long uh, so this will continue to rotate as well uh, turning away from earth and we're left with another another regional sunspot here it's kind of a large disorganized structure but uh, I don't even know if they've named this yet. At 3168, the newest named sunspot doesn't harbor a lot of potential. Um, so uh, these ones here, 3166, 3162, are looks like they're gaining a little bit, a little bit of uh, instability and growth with within uh, all three of these sunspots. Uh, current threat level right now, 99% chance, obviously, of a C flare. M flare has been consistent uh, for a while now. Uh, crackling with M flares, quite a bit of them. 
X flare around 15% chance. Now look at that. It's been a while <laughs> since we've seen this many. And this is just above 2.0. And I don't even know if it's, this is covering um, all of them. Um, so I will go back later tonight and verify all of these M flares that have taken place here. I don't know if that's a record or not for any short amount of time. But uh, we'll look at that. 3163 again. 3165. The most likely culprits have seen any elevated solar flares. Not a whole lot going on for the uh, current three day. So the Aurora forecast looks pretty minimal there. Unless we get a uh, major CME or a large coronal hole facing Earth, uh, things will stay somewhat minimal for the Auroras. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe out there. We will be back a little bit later tonight uh, with a complete update. And again, we'll watch, uh, keep an eye on the big island it's out there on a hot spot. The oceanic crust is pretty darn thin. And, um, you know, who knows exactly what's going on out here in this region. Not fear-mongering, but more or less being realistic here. Uh, just, I find it really odd that things would stop altogether there at the um, both volcanoes. But continuing tilt, uh, inflationary tilt there, uh, showing... Um, swelling there within both volcano areas uh, along with uh, some odd earthquakes out there so we'll just kind of keep an eye on it folks see how it plays out and of course report back here if anything changes again the hot spot or the uh, station there to monitor earthquake activity on the big island around Pahala is going to be a station called hot caves now that's listed up here on the bottom left side of the screen of the live stream there's a couple different uh, seismographs I run. Mount St. Helens, station there in Japan, Yellowstone National Park, uh, and Hot Caves. A lot of people, where's Hot Caves at? Well, kind of announcing it right now. Hot Caves, Hawaii, near Pahala. Um, there's other stations out there, but um, I like using this one here. It's pretty accurate and it stays online for the most part. All right, guys, have a good day. It's Friday. Enjoy it. Gonna come. I'm uh, gonna probably gonna barbecue. Just sounds like a good deal. Barbecue some. Uh, I don't know what I'll barbecue, but we'll figure it out. We'll catch you guys a little bit later tonight with a complete update. Stay safe, everyone.